Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Carcassonne the Castle, which is Reiner Knizia's take on Klaus Jürgen Werder's classic Carcassonne. Now it's a two player only game, and for Jens and my money, it is the best version of Carcassonne out there. Although, of course, you can only play it if you have two players. And I'm going to be doing a run through today so you guys can find out what it's all about and whether it might be the right version of Kark for you. So let's jump right into it. Now, I've already got the board set up, and as you can see, there is the game comes with a bunch of jigsaw pieces that snap together to form the castle walls that are going to be where we are laying our tiles. We are you know bound to stay inside the castle walls, and this also does double duty as a score marker as well. And both of us, Jen, the the uh, white player, me, the black player, are starting at zero points. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of tiles lying around, and let's just jump right into it. I'll be the first player. So I gotta grab a tile randomly. I will grab. I'll grab that one, just totally randomly. Um, I don't know why I just slammed the table like that. Sorry, folks. Kind of scared the beagles. But anyway, so on your turn, first of all, you draw a tile, and then you place it. And so this is half keep, half house. And so, the very first tile that is placed on the board, you know, in, in regular cards on the first tile just gets put out in the center because other tiles get added to it. In castle, the first tile you place has to go adjacent to one of these starting points that are up here on various parts of the of the map. Let's see. And I think I'll just go on ahead and slap it down over here. And you can see I make the keep line up with this keep and I make this house line up with the house. Now, uh, interestingly, probably the single biggest change from traditional Carcassonne is you are not required, to, when you place your tile, to adhere to the tiles that you're going next to. I mean, obviously I did here. I put the house next to a house and the castle next to a castle. But if I wanted, I could have placed it like this. Or I could have placed it like this. Um, the only limitation on putting tiles down are that you have to adhere to, you, you, you have to make sure you don't mess up roads. So like this starting space over here happens to have a road. You can see there's a little road between the house and the farm. So I would not be able to place this in any way at this space because it would interrupt the road. You can't interrupt roads. But I'll go ahead and put it here and I'll actually line it up correctly. Although I didn't have to. Now, after having done that, I have the option, if I want to, of putting one of my meeples on the tile. I don't have to. I start with five meeples I can place, plus a keep marker, which I'll describe in a little bit. And so now I can go on ahead and place this on the tile I just placed. I can't put it on the tile next to where I place. I have to put it on this tile. And I can either, in this case, for this particular tile, I can claim this keep, which is currently two tiles big, or I can claim this house, which is two tiles big. I'll go ahead and claim the keep. So for now, anyway, this is my keep, although I won't be able to score it until I complete it, which means it has to be completely surrounded by tiles of another type. And right now, there's still potential for it to expand in two directions. All right. So that was my turn. My turn is over, and now it's Jen's turn. She'll go on and grab this one, or this one. All right, so this is a field and a little bit of house. Now Jen, she can expand off my existing tile, and you know she can do it with a fair bit of flexibility. The game, the game gives you a lot of flexibility about how you place your tiles. So it's much less luck dependent than traditional Carcassonne, where you're much more restricted in how you place tiles. Um, let's see. Where's Jen going to put this? So she could put it next to my tile. She can put it next to any of these other starting tiles. Um, I think, yeah, what the heck. She'll go on ahead and put it over here. And so now, once again, Jen can place a meeple if she wants to. And she could either use it to claim the beginnings of this house, which is currently two spaces big, or she could claim this field that, at the beginning, this field happens to have one market in it. Let's see here. I think, for starters, she'll go on ahead and, and well, will she claim the house? This, is, this house is kind of tied in tight. Yeah, what the heck, she'll go ahead and claim the house, just to go and grab, grab some quick points, because this is a house that could get finished very quickly. And so that was Jen's turn. And, you know, and, and it's as simple as that. Every turn, you draw a tile, you place it someplace legal, and then you have the option of placing a, uh, what do you call it, a, a meeple. Let's see, I will go on ahead and I will place this tile over here. So I am going to continue now. My my keep that I control is has three tiles in it. One, two, three. Which means currently it's worth six points because if you own a keep when it gets completed, every tile that contributes to that keep is worth two points. So currently I'm looking at six points here. 
But the keep hasn't been finished yet. And now if I want, I could put another meeple uh, on the new tile. I get, now, I could put it on the field. When you put meeples on fields, you have to lay them down uh, as a special kind of thing. So I could do that to claim this field. But this field is worth no points. In fact, at the end of the game, you can score fields. But they're not worth anything unless they've got these little markets in them. So if Jen had wanted to, she could have claimed this field, which means she's effectively claiming this market that's touching the field, which means this meeple at the end of the game is worth at least three points. But fields, you don't get to score until the end of the game. Everything else, like houses and keeps and roads, you get to score along the way. So Jen, she's going to try and grab some quick points by going for this house right in this field. Me. I'm not going to bother with this field because, well, I mean, this field is actually fairly close to this market over here. So I might be able to expand to get over to this. I mean, if I wanted, I could actually come over here like this instead. And then I could claim this field. So I'm grabbing that market. Or, yeah, heck, you know, I could go on ahead and put it over here and expand off of Jen's tile. And then I could put it in this field. And so, you know, this field reaches all the way over here and I'm claiming that market. But right now, I'm just trying to put a capper on this keep I've started. And because I want to score that keep relatively quickly if I can, for reasons I'll show in a second. So now I have the option. I can't, I'm not going to bother wasting a meeple because this meeple will be tied up for the rest of the game. I won't be able to use him for anything else because, you know, um, he only scores at the end of the game. And but now I cannot put a meeple on this keep space because whenever you're putting a meeple down, you cannot use a meeple to claim something that's already been claimed. And since I've already claimed this keep, I cannot claim it a second time. I already have claimed it. All right, so anyway, so that's it. So I'm not actually going to place a meeple this turn. Now it's Jen's turn again. She'll grab this tile. All right, ooh, it's a big house. Okay, let's see. I think Jen wants to keep building her house. So she'll go on ahead and put this over here. And, um, you know, so this house is now one, two, three tiles big. And she can place a meeple if she wants. She cannot place it on the house because, like I said, she's already claimed this house, so she can't claim it a second time. But if she wants to, she could, and she will, put it on this little keep, this little one space keep that's worth two points. And so now she might be able to score this thing pretty quickly if this keep gets completed. Although right now, it could still has the potential to expand. All right, so that was Jen's turn. And now she's only got three meeples left, whereas I've got four. And then we still both have our keeps. We'll worry about that in a minute. I'll grab this tile randomly. Ooh, all right. So this one has some roads and it has a market. Now, roads are the most restrictive thing in this game. When you place a tile, you have to place it such that it, you know, it, roads, I mean, don't get messed up. So I would not be able to place it like this because this road does not align with this um, field. It just ends abruptly. You can't do that. Now, what I could do is. Let's see. I could say I could put it over here like this, because you'll notice how, hey, look, that road you know, comes off of the road that was already built there nice and easily. And then there's another road kind of hanging out here that might lead to something also. So I could do that. Let's see, where else could I put it? Well, it's interesting. This tile has roads on all four sides. So I pretty much have to place it next to a road. So there's really only two places I could go. I could put it over here and start building off of this road. Or there's another start road. I could put it over here and start building off of that road. I think I'll do that. All right. And now I am going to place a meeple. I've got a choice. I could put a meeple on this road to claim this road, this one to claim this road, or I could lay it on its side to claim this field where there's a market, which is worth points. I could claim this field, which is not particularly useful. Or I could claim this field, which doesn't have any markets. I'm going to go on ahead and put it here and claim this road. And now it's interesting. This is a new feature, although I think this feature was introduced in one of the expansions for Carcassonne as well. Not all roads in Carcassonne Castle are created equal. Every tile of a road, when a road gets scored, is worth one point. But if that road, anywhere along it, has a well, every space on that tile of that road is worth two points. So this road right now is worth one, two, three, four points because there's a well on it. So I'm really looking forward to closing off that road so I can score points off of it. All right. So that was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn again. And all right. Ah. Let's see. Now this one has some roads as well. So although there's one side that doesn't have roads, so Jen could say she could do something like this if she wanted, and that would start to make her little castle a bit bigger, and the roads line up correctly. Um, you know, or could she, she could do something like this. Roads are allowed to run right up to the castle walls. That's totally legal. So Jen could go something like that, and now that would start her or stop her house from expanding in that direction. 
Um, and then if she can just get a tile over here, she would complete this house and be able to score it. And that's a big part of what this game is all about, trying to start building features and then score them so you can get your, your little meeples back so you can start scoring other stuff that you're building up. So where's Jen going to put this? She could also, you know, um, put it next to one of these roads that already exist. I mean, heck, actually, you know what? I think she'll do that. Jen is just going to go on ahead. She'll put this road right here, expanding off of this starter road. And she'll place a meeple down. And now here's the interesting thing. By placing that meeple down to claim this road, she gets to score it immediately because this road is complete. You can see how it starts on the castle wall and ends at this little intersection. That means this is a completed road. And by putting this down, Jen has just, you know, because whenever you put a tile down, you immediately get to put a meeple. Jen could have put the meeple over here to start working on a road that goes north or this to go a road that goes south. Or she could have put it on this castle that would expand, you know, kind of westerly. Or she could put it down here on this house that might expand. But Jen instead put it here on this road. The road is completed and so Jen just scored two points. Because every tile that has a road when you score a road is worth a point unless there is a well. Like my road I'm starting over here is worth two points per space but Jen's over here is only worth one point per space. So Jen claimed it and she, she is on the board. She is the first to score points. Jen is at two points to zero. Okay. And that was her turn. Now it's my turn and I will grab this tile over here. Ah, okay. There's some more road here and some castles. So now, interestingly, if I wanted to, I could just go on ahead and slap this road, say, down like this or like this. I couldn't like that because you can't interrupt roads, but I could do something like that. And the interesting thing is, by me putting this here, I am ending this road because the road started to get this wall, it ends at this intersection. And so this road would be one, two, three spaces big. And because there's a well, I would score six points by doing that. And I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and finish that. Although, remember, when you put a tile down, you have the opportunity to claim something. I'll go ahead and put this guy right here. So he is starting to try to claim this castle. All right. And so I place the tile. I finish this road. So this guy comes off and I score one, two, three, four, five, six points. So here I am up at six to Jen's two. Now, there's another really core thing that's hugely important to consider every step of the way while you're playing Carcass on the Castle. At certain points on the score track, there are these bonus tiles that give you all kinds of benefits like extra turns and um, <clears throat> you know, double points when you score things and stuff like that. The key to winning is collecting these tiles. To, to collect this tile, I have to make a move where I score something, whether it's a road or a keep or a house or whatever it might be. And when when I score, I land exactly at 12 points or 13 points. So right now, if I could score 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points or 7 points, and if I'm the first person to land on one of these spaces, I will get this tile and get a powerful bonus that could really help me win the game. Jen, and we are kind of, it's interesting. We're in a race in this game. We want to score really big and you know, make really big houses and castles and score a lot of points. But we want to be very targeted with our scoring because if, say, right now I scored 10 points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I would skip this tile completely because you have to score exactly 12 or 13. But the interesting thing is if I scored 10, I'd end up over here because I'm at 6 right now. I'd score 16 and I'd get this tile. So a big part of the game is always trying to decide, should you go for a big score even if it means you'd skip a tile? But maybe it means you're going to get the next tile ahead of time. You can also, if you want to get in your opponent's face, you could try to interrupt things that they're trying to score and may potentially make them miss tiles that they're going for. But anyway, so I just scored six points by um, closing off that road and I'm starting to work on this castle over here as well. And now I am looking to try and finish something up such that I will score one, two, three, four, five, six or seven points. Now maybe this castle over, this castle over here is not going to do it. Because it's already worth 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points. Even if I close this thing off, it's probably going to get me 10 points, maybe even 12 points, depending on how big it gets. Which means I'd skip this one entirely, but I'd grab this tile. Because remember, if I score 10 points, I'll land on 16. So I'm giving myself some options. If I can finish this castle off quicker, maybe I'll get the short-term one, or maybe I'll go for the long-term one. All right, but anyway, so that was my turn. Jen's turn. She's going to take another tile. Let's see here. So... What does she want to do? So current, let's see. So she could put this down here, and this is expanding her little castle, which is currently worth two points, but now it's worth four points. And Jen would like to score ten points as quickly as possible, so she can jump in here and grab this tile before I do. But she's a long way off from that. 
Let's see, now on the flip side, if she said, you know, maybe just puts it down here like this, this is interesting. Jen will go on ahead and put this tile right here. And what's happened is she has just now made this house one space bigger. Currently, this house is worth one for this starting tile, two, three, four. This house is worth four points, but it's not finished yet. It could still expand. It's not until it can't expand anymore that you score it. So Jen's little meeple here is tied up. But remember, you put a tile down, you get to place a meeple. Jen's going to place her meeple. She can't place it here because she's already claimed this house. She could place it here, but claiming this field is not particularly good because there's no market. She's going to place it right here, and she will. And this castle is this little keep is completely closed off. This little tower space. So she's claimed it, and she immediately gets to score it again. Every tile that's in a tower that you score is worth two points. So Jen just made two more points, and that's getting her closer to that first tile as well. And she got her meeple back, so she has more flexibility. All right, my turn. And let's see. Hmm. Okay, I've got a big castle here. So, now this is a problem. You know, I could put it over here, or say over here like this, and I could keep on expanding and making this castle much bigger. So, or you know, this keep, or this tower, I think they're called. So that when I eventually score it, it'll be worth a lot of points. But, that means I have the potential of skipping these things. But heck, you know, there's this 20 or 21 point one over there. So I could do that. Instead, I could put it over here and expand this castle that I'm working on. But see, I really want to try and score six points. Is there a better way to do that? This is not really that useful for that because you know it's it's three three of its sides have castle on, so it's probably going to expand more and more and more. So you know what? I guess I'll just go on ahead and throw it down here and keep expanding this castle I placed at the beginning. So it's going to be a big. I'm working on this as like a long-term big scoring thing, um, which you know maybe I'll score later in the game. You know, maybe when I get my points up to here, and then I've got like a big jump to make over to this thing, maybe that's when I'd want to score this. So there's a surprising amount of playing that goes into scoring. Anyway, so that was my turn, Jen's turn. She's got a little half castle, half field. Hmm, let's see. This is interesting. She goes ahead and puts this like this, or say like this, and now the castle Jen's working on is worth one, two, three, four points, but she still has to close it off. And she wants to get um, eight points if she can. So that's not bad. What else could she do with this? <clears throat> she could also say, like, put it over here, and then it connects to this castle that was a starting pace. So this castle is worth four points, and she'd be able to close this castle off very quickly and easily with a single tile. And if it's another, you know, so this could be four or maybe six points. But again, Jen wants to hit eight points if she can. So I think she'll go on ahead. She'll go on ahead and put it over here, and it's expanding this little tower that she's already started working on. And again, she could place. She can't claim the tower she's already claimed with this guy, but she could claim this field. But you know, this field isn't really worth much of anything right now. Well, if she actually, well, if she put it like that, then she's not really expanding her castle at all. So she's not going to place a meeple there. All right, my turn. You can see this game is super quick, super fast, super speedy. You just draw a tile, you place it, you potentially um, claim and score stuff. All right, so this has a road, which means I'm limited. I have to make sure that the road, you know, doesn't break other potential roads. So you know, I could expand it, say, off of this road. This would be legal. That's not bad. Or interestingly, I could. See, I could, I could do something like this. And now the road's fine because, you know, it, it's, it's, um, you know, it could still expand in this way, this way. It's not legal. And by doing something like this or like this, I'm starting to close this castle off so I could maybe finish it. But I'm happy with letting that grow. I'm going to go ahead and put it over here like this. Okay. And so and I'm going to place meeple. I could either I'll put it on this tile to claim this road, claim this field, or claim this house. I'm going to start working on a house myself. Jen. Oh shoot! I just noticed um, when Jen, I, der, right on Jen's last turn, when she put this tile down and expanded her castle, Jen finished this house. The, Jen's house is completely finished now. So at the end of her turn, she had to take this off, and she scored a house that was worth one, two, three, four points. One, two, three, four. So now Jen's closer to scoring that thing. And here's the other interesting thing as well. This is the first house Jen has ever scored. And so she puts her keep marker on it. Because that represents, this is the biggest keep Jen has made so far. Um, there is we're, another way we're competing. We're in addition to competing on points, in addition to trying to be the first to grab these tiles, we are also competing to have the biggest house at the end of the game. Currently, Jen has set the high water mark at one, two, three, four. If I make a house that is five tiles big, I'll have the biggest house at the end of the game. But Jen, she could start another house, and um, you know, if she ever makes a house that's bigger than this one, she'll pick this up and put it on another house. 
house. At the end of the game, there's a potentially a lot of bonus points to be had for whoever has the biggest house, or keep it's called. Anyway, so Jen did that. She scored her thing, and now she needs one, two, three, four. She needs a quick four or five points to be able to grab this tile. And in the meantime, I went over here and I started building my own house. So now it's Jen's turn again. Let's see here. Ah, castle. Hmm. So if she put something, if she did this, let's say, now her castle is worth one, two, three, four, six points. One, two, three, four, five, which means she would skip this tile. So that's a problem. Jen does not want to miss that tile. She wants to get that bonus. But by the flip side, she wants to make this castle worth more points. And that is really the crux of the decision making in this game. Now I think what Jen's going to do is, so she could put this, make this castle worth more. Instead, she's going to place it like this. And so she has closed off a, an expansion for this castle. If she can put a tile over here now, this castle will be done. It'll be worth three points, one, two, three, which isn't quite enough. But here's what she's going to do. She placed this tile like this. So she could try to claim this castle that's starting to build. She could claim this field, which is not particularly interesting. She's going to claim this little house. And you'll notice this house is completely closed off. So as soon as she claimed it, she scored it. And she just made one point. Now she needs one, two, three, or one, two, three, four points. And this castle is perfectly positioned to give her the four points she needs to grab that tile. So uh, next turn, she might be doing it. Unless right now, I can very quickly score one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven points on this turn. Jen's going to beat me to that tile. So let's see what we got here. Um, boop. And I got a big old castle. Hmm. Now it's interesting. So this is not going to get me the six or seven points I need to be able to claim this tile. One thing I could do is, if I was crazy, I could put it right here. And now this expands Jen's castle. And so suddenly her castle, which she was planning on cutting off with something, so it's worth four points so she can get this tile. If I put this right here, it would be worth six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I could force Jen to miss this tile entirely. And then, you know, I mean, potentially, depending on what's happening, she might end up missing this tile as well. Because once she skips over it, then um, you know, I, you know, I, I, you know, she can't go back, and I would have nailed that. So that's an interesting choice I have. If I want to try to mess with her scoring, I'd be giving her more points by expanding her castle. But by the same token, I would be um, maybe preventing her from getting that thing. Because otherwise, it's very likely, what, no matter what tile Jen gets, it's likely. You, the game gives you a lot more freedom than regular Carcassonne as to where you place your tiles. So it's likely she's going to close this off and grab that tile now. I can stop that from happening just by doing something like this. Heck, I could do that, and then I could even put my little guy down here and claim this field, which is worth three points because there's a market right there. So I could do that. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but I think I'm going to. All right, so I've just kind of moved in, and that really put the kibosh. And you know, it wasn't a wasted time. I've given Gen 2 more points, but on the same token, I've potentially stopped her from getting this. Or, and I've gone on ahead and I've claimed this field, which right now is worth three points. And if I can get more markets into this area, and I've, if I can expand this field down to here, here's another three points down there. So that was my big move to stop Jen from grabbing that tile. And now it's her turn, and boom. Now see, if I hadn't blocked like this, she could put this tile down like here. And then this castle would have been finished. It would have been worth four points, one, two, three, four, and Jen would have grabbed the tile. But I interfered, and so now Jen's got a new tile. So where is she going to put this? Let's see. She could start building another house. She can't expand the house she's already done. She could start working on a road. Oh, interesting. Yep, okay, I did this to try and block Jen, but um, a solution popped into her lap anyway. She's going to put this over here, working, uh, and she is going to claim. Is this right? Oh, wait, no, no, no. One, two. Yeah, no, she's going to put it here like this. Oh, this is interesting. So she's going to place it like this. And upon placing the tile, she's going to place her meeple on this road. So she is trying to claim that road. And now this interesting thing is two things have happened here. Jen has finished this road, which she'll score. And in doing it, she's also finished my house. So I will score. And now, in a case like this where multiple people would score you know, from the same tile placement, it's up to the player who placed the tile to decide the order. And Jen, she's going to go on ahead and score first. She gets one, two, three points for this three-length road, and that's one, two, three. And she got the tile. In spite of my best effort to stop her, she got it anyway. Now, let's see what it is. This, oh, okay. This is a tile that means at the end of the game, 
Jen can score points for an incomplete castle she's working on. This is another fundamental difference from regular Carcassonne. In regular Carcassonne, when all the tiles are done and you're um, tallying up final score, you can get score for incomplete roads, incomplete um, towns, incomplete um, what are the other things? The little churches. In Carcassonne the Castle, you don't get scores for incomplete. So the game it actually requires you to do a lot smarter planning because you can't just build willy-nilly, always build big, and know that you'll score points at the end of the game. In this game, if you don't complete something, you don't score any points for it. But Jen, she's now got a get out of jail free card. One castle, or one, I'm sorry, one keep, one of these towers that she fails to finish, will she'll still be able to score at the end of the game. All right, and so anyway, so now on her turn, she also closed off my house. So this was one, two tiles. So I just got one, two. And it just so happens, this is my biggest house to date. And so Jen, by cutting me off, not only did she get the tower, but she now still has the biggest house, which means at the end of the game, she's in the potential spot to score more points. And that was her turn, and now it's my turn again. And oh, I gave her points, and I didn't even achieve what I want to. But there's still the race for this one. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine points to grab that thing. But I'm in a bit of a pickle now to try and score those nine points. Or eight points. Let's see. This castle over here is worth one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. If I could close it off, but that means I've got to close off this side, this side, and this side. It's going to take me three tiles to get this thing closed off, and I, so I might not have a chance to get it. I might have to give up. Jen might be able to get to this one quicker than me. In which case, I need to be thinking about closing this off in such a way that it will get me this tile. And so. That's it, folks. That's the basics of how Carcassonne Castle works. Every turn, you draw a tile, you place it, you potentially, if you want to, place a meeple, and then you potentially score if you've completed a road, a tower, or a manor, or a house, or whatever. And the main thing is you're always trying to be very exacting and specific about your scores so you can pick up these bonuses. And um, those are the basics. Now, if you'd like to watch a little bit more, you can hit the button that's on screen and go to the extended playthrough. I'll keep playing for a few more rounds. Or you can hit the other button and go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.